Hello everyone, if you don't know who I am, my name is Ben and I make educational lifting videos and today we're talking about all things curls and I had to wear the tank because how could I possibly have any degree of credibility to you if I didn't do some flexing. Okay, so this question comes from a, a YouTube video I made a couple days ago and it comes from Nminate, and he says, or she says, I'd love to see a topic covering internal leverages for elbow flexors as it relates to supination and pronation. That's basically the crux of what we're gonna be diving into. Now, if you don't know what elbow flexors are, they're elbow bending muscles, okay? And there are three of them, and we're gonna talk about basically how the muscle recruitment changes with different types of curls today. And I'm gonna show you some stuff here, and then some stuff on Frank. So. We have three elbow flexors. Again, whenever you hear elbow flexor, just think elbow bender. It's the same shit. Um, people sometimes like to use uh, uh, terms that sound fancier. So like if you're seeing people online and they're saying elbow flexion or hip flexion or extension or supination or pronation, these are all terms that are very useful and that describe things, but we can also just describe them in simple ways. So I will say elbow benders. And there are three of them. You have the brachialis, which is there. You have the brachioradialis and then you have, oops, sorry, you have the biceps, okay? Now, all three of these are elbow benders, but when it comes to supination and pronation, another term I will define now, supination is this, pronation is this, which we will dive more into on Frank in a second. Um, when it comes to the supination pronation stuff, palms up, palms down stuff, the only two that we really need to consider in terms of how their leverages are changing are these two guys. So why is that? Well, I'm so happy you asked, and Frank is going to need to help us out with that. First of all, when we look at pronation and supination on a bony or bone only person, what that looks like is this. Okay, so supination and pronation, you can think of more simply as the folding over of this bone on this bone. So this is called the radius, which is on the outside, and this is the ulna on the inside. The only muscles on the front side of the elbow that can contribute to this motion are ones that attach to this bone, okay? So remember that brachialis thing, okay? This guy right here. The reason that brachialis does not care about any of this forearm stuff is because look at where it attaches. It attaches on the ulna bone, which is right here. And so regardless, you're doing a hammer curl, a supinated curl, a reverse curl, that brachialis is getting trained in 100% of curls, okay? so. Take that for whatever it's worth to you, and put it to the side for a second, okay? Because now we're gonna talk about the brachioradialis and the biceps and their relationships. So many of you probably know, if you start from like ahead of where I'm speaking and you work backward to now, you probably know that like hammer curls are less biceps and supinated curls are more biceps. But I think it's important to understand these things on a little bit of a deeper level if you actually wanna understand like how you can sort of integrate all this stuff into a program, not to mention the fact that this stuff also relates to, you know, pulling variations and how, how these muscles are targeted differently in pulling variations. Okay, so when we're thinking about the degree of pronation and supination, now understanding that pronation and supination is ultimately a matter of this bone pivoting around this one, what we need to then think of is, well, what happens when we move into these different forearm positions in terms of these two muscles? This is the brachioradialis, this green, and then my biceps is gonna be my pink, okay? So starting with the biceps. If the biceps run kind of upward in this direction, and you look at where they attach to the radius bone, what they will have leverage to do is supinate from a position that is not supination. And that's gonna be a really key thing there, the from a position that is not supination in just a second. So if, for instance, if I am in a neutral grip, like a hammer grip curl or a reverse grip curl, what my biceps will want to do because of where it attaches, right? Watch what happens to this insertion right here. If I move the forearm bone this way, you'll see how that insertion is kind of tucking underneath of. In other words, the biceps tendon is kind of wrapping around the radius bone. When it does that, it kind of winds up almost like, um, I don't know, like a spool or something. And so what, it can, what happens is the biceps from this position can rotate this bone outward, i.e. they can supinate. So when you're in a neutral grip position, what the biceps would want to do in theory, if you could press a button and maximally activate the biceps, is they would want to supinate and bend the elbow, right? They do all of those things at once. That's how all muscles work, is they try to perform all of their joint actions that they can around a given joint. And so there's no point at which the biceps will choose to bend the elbow and not choose to supinate 
unless you are already in a position where you are fully supinated, right? When you're doing a palms up curl, what does the biceps want to do? Does it want to supinate the forearm? Does it want to spin this bone? No, it no longer wants to. Why? Because it's not sort of twisted around the bone that way. When it's twisted around the bone that way, as in a hammer or a, a, or a, a reverse grip position, it spins around that bone so it can supinate. But once the, oops, we just had a dislocation there. Sorry, Frank. Once it is supinated, once the palm is up, the biceps now basically just sits on the top side of this bone, which means that it no longer wants to supinate. And really what I mean more specifically is it no longer can supinate. And the only thing it does is it bends the elbow. Okay, so keep, keep all that in mind in terms of when the biceps can and can't supinate because we say, oh, the biceps is a supinator and I will ask, well, from what position, right? Because if you're in a reverse grip position or a hammer grip position, yeah, the biceps is a supinator. But once you're supinated, if I say supinated one more time, I'm gonna freak out here, um, there's, there's no more tendency for it to actually perform that joint action. All it wants to do is bend the elbow. Okay, so remember that, don't forget it. Now let's think about this guy, okay? Brachioradialis runs from up here on the bottom of the upper arm down to this process called the radial styloid, I think it's called, or something like that, all the way down here on the sort of bottom side of the forearm. So we have to think in terms of the same kind of concepts, right? If my uh, forearm and my radial ulnar joint is in this neutral position, look where this guy is positioned, right? It's positioned such that it is on the top of where we would be curling. So in other words, it's on the sort of top side of this bone now in a neutral position uh, in the same way that the biceps were on the top side of the forearm when we were in a supinated position. So what happens when you move into a neutral grip position to do like something like a hammer curl is this insertion moves on the top side of this joint, i.e. directly as you curl toward this bone. And so its influence on the elbow joint and on the forearm is just basically a curling motion. But what happens if I move into a supinated position? Watch what happens to this insertion right here. If I move into a supinated position, do you all see now how this uh, attachment is moving to the side? right? So it was on sort of the top where when we would bend the elbow, it would move in the direction of the upper arm. But now if I supinate like I'm doing a biceps curl, what happens is it goes to the side. And so from this position, this is kind of the winding up equivalent that we just talked about, but now for the brachioradialis, right? Because what happens is the brachioradialis in this position would want to basically pronate and elbow bend. Okay, so none of these muscles are ever losing their ability to elbow bend. What's happening is they are moving away from being the muscle that is on the top side of the elbow joint. And as a consequence of that, they would want to perform other joint actions, which makes it less likely that we recruit those things. So here's what I mean. If I'm in this supinated position and my brachioradialis is all the way on the side, the side of this bone now, instead of on the top, like in a hammer curl, if it's on the side, it will want to pull the elbow and bend it like this, but then also peroni. So is our brain and our body, is it going to choose something? Is it going to choose a muscle that's going to basically pull the forearm out of the position that we're in? Or is it going to basically say, okay, what is in the position? What muscle is in the position that's only gonna perform the desired joint action? And so what this fundamentally comes down to is which of these two muscles is better leveraged to be able to only perform elbow bending and not supination or pronation. So for example, if in the case of the brachioradialis, I went to the reverse grip curl, you all see now how this is on kind of the inside. So this is a very cool muscle because once you move from a neutral to a pronated position, what does this want to do? Well, now it wants to supinate, pull it back to the sort of center, so to speak, and bend the elbow. So again, if you were doing like this kind of curl, like a reverse grip, and you supinated as you did the curl, would you have some biceps recruitment? Absolutely, because you're supinating. But also, this muscle becomes a supinator until it's back at neutral, okay? So here's the overall general picture, if that was maybe a little bit too wonky, a little bit too technical, or if I explain that poorly. Whatever is kind of on the top side of the elbow is basically going to be the muscle that only elbow bends. And when we're doing curls and we're just ha we have a fixed hand position, either supinated or neutral or pronated, basically the muscles that would otherwise pull the hand and the forearm out of that position are the ones that are gonna get deprioritized, right? Because the muscle that is only gonna do the thing that we're gonna ask it to do, or uh, the action we're trying to perform, that's gonna be the muscle that is most efficiently placed to perform the work. 
So this is why if you're in a supinated position where the brachioradialis is kind of on the side and the biceps is on the top, the biceps is primarily recruited because to recruit this guy would mean that we would have to move into this neutral position if we wanted to recruit this maximally, right? And that costs the brain and the body extra energy, which we don't want to spend. Our bodies are basically energy conservation um, masterpieces, okay? And the same is true of doing a neutral curl. So if I'm in a neutral curl, imagine I could snap my fingers and magically maximally recruit my biceps only. What would happen is I would supinate and then move into that elbow bent position. But instead what happens, because we can actually control that and choose not to do that, is I just maximally recruit the brachioradialis. Okay, so hammer curl, and again, you already probably know this, hammer curl, better for brachioradialis, supinated curl, better for biceps. Now reverse curl is interesting because in a reverse curl, what you're doing is you're disadvantaging both the brachioradialis and the biceps. Why? Because in both cases, neither of these muscles is in line to just perform the elbow bending like in a supinated or a neutral curl. And so now what essentially happens is that is that brachialis muscle, the one that was underneath that we were talking about that has no influence on this bone, right? The one that just attaches to the ulna, the, brachial, uh, the brachialis muscle, I believe, will pick up some slack from these other two muscles in terms of what can contribute. But even in that case, what tends to happen too is people's wrist extensors now start to fatigue, right? So if you're holding like a dumbbell or something, uh, and that dumbbell is here and you're doing a curl or a cable, that dumbbell or cable is going to want to bend your wrist like this against which we have to wrist extend. And so this is why people typically feel like the top side of their forearm a lot when they're doing reverse curls because they have to hold that wrist extension action. So the reverse curl is less of like a um, elbow bending motion as it is a kind of hybrid of like wrist extension and elbow bending, which would be great for like wrist extensors on the back side of the arm and also the brachialis. But personally speaking, I don't love the reverse curl because I'm kind of, I kind of just think to myself, well, if I wanted to train wrist extensors, I would just like do a wrist extension thing in isolation. And if I wanted to train my brachialis muscle, I'd probably just do a hammer curl because the grip is super convenient and I can also get some extra stimulus to this guy, okay? So overall, what is recruited is really uh, determined by which muscle, which elbow bending muscle only really is gonna elbow bend. The brachialis in any curl, regardless of the curl, is always going to contribute to the bending and it's not gonna contribute, contribute to the forearm stuff. The other muscles here, the biceps and the brachioradialis, these muscles are gonna be recruited depending on the position of the forearm and really which one of those forearm positions allows for just pure elbow bending. In the case of biceps, it's supinated. In the case of brachioradialis, it's uh, neutral. And then again, when we move toward a reverse grip, other forearm stuff in the brachialis will be the sort of things that are dominating these different motions. And so overall, this was nitty gritty. I understand it, but I hope it helps. If you are interested in learning more from me, I have a totally free community and you can ask any follow-ups and I'll answer 100% of those in, in the community. You can go in there now and just see that I literally answer everyone. Um, so go in the free community, check it out. And um, if you're not interested in learning more than me, well, then you probably are not watching by now. And regardless, I hope you have a fantastic day. Drop any questions below that you want me to answer in future YouTube videos.